So, welcome to the uh, module on addressing modes instruction set and instruction execution flow lecture number 3. So, uh, unit other uh, is the unit number 3. Since the last two units, we have basically seen what is the basic structure and the components of a CPU and external interface and we have seen basically the black box architecture of a memory. So, with this we have built enough background to understand the basic stuff which we are going to cover in this module that is what is an instruction, how it is executed, what are the different types and formats, instruction set design and what are the typical use of instructions to call functions and written procedure. So, with the background built, now we are going to see the first step that given a very simple instruction how it is executed. So, that is this unit is dedicated to understanding the execution of an in instruction for that the basic idea required for the memory architecture as well as for the how the CPU is organized is will suffice. So, as I told you that from a pedagogical perspective, so we are first going to see what is the summary of this unit. So, in this case we are first going to see what is the performance or what is the functions which are performed by a CPU for executing an instruction. So, basically as it is a von Neumann architecture, so the instructions as well as data are in the memory. So, first what happens? So, whenever you want to execute an instruction, first you have to calculate the address of the instruction and in which memory location at what address the instruction is there. So, that is the first step. Secondly, the instruction will be fetched. Now, it will be fetched and loaded into a special register called a instruction register IR. So, now the instructions will be decoded that what it has to do. Sometimes it may be very simple like shift 2 numbers or add 2 numbers or do bitwise shifting and sometimes it can be very complicated like a matrix multiplication. So, that is actually called the instruction fetch. Then you have to find out that is the operation decoding that what is the instruction expected to do. That is all the instructions basically has two minimum characters minimum fields. One is the opcode that is the op, op, operation it has to do that is again binarized because all the instructions are basically represented in binary. So, one part of the address field will be dedicated for instruction decoding that is that is what the instruction is expected to do and it has to be decoded. Then based on that it may have it may operate on two numbers, it may operate on two operands, it may op operate on a single operand. Like for example, if the instruction just compares whether a number is greater than 0. So, it is just a single operand instruction. Also, and, but if it adds two numbers, then it is a two operand instruction. So, next you have to find out that what, what you find out all those things when you decode an instruction. After decoding, you have to find out whether you want one, inst one operand to be fetched, whether you want two operands to be fetched or whether the operand is given itself in the instruction. For example, I may have an instruction that is called an immediate addressing mode where the data is given in the instruction itself. For example, I may want to compute 5 plus 5. So, this 5 plus 5 is given in the instruction itself. So, you need not go and bring the data from the memory itself. So, that is you have to go for an operand address calculation. But sometimes I may say that I want to add 3 with the data which is available in the memory location may be the variable or the memory address is 0, 0, 0, 3 hex. So, in that case you have to go for operand address calculation and then you have to fetch the operand from the memory. So, after that is done you have to do the operation of the data and then you have to store back the data in the memory if it is required. So, in a nutshell basically we store uh, fetch the instruction, decode the instruction and then find out whether some operands has to be fetched from the memory and then uh, fetch the operands, do the operation and store it in a memory location. So, generally we call this whole thing in a very few steps instruction fetch, instruction decode, instruction execute. So, in decoding we generally involve decoding these instructions as well as bringing the values from the memories or if the instructions are at immediate addressing mode then take the values from the instruction itself. That is decoding uh, instruction fetch decode in decode we do all this stuff and execute means simply we execute the instruction, but in our details are given over here. So, again so generally from the user's perspective we see that instruction 1, then instruction 2, then instructions it, it will keep on going if there is a jump instruction you will jump to the position again come back and so forth. But there is also very special stuff which is actually called the interrupt. Sometimes uh, based on requirement you may want to interrupt the existing flow of instruction that may be based on requirement may be uh, say that a code is executing at that time you want to move the mouse. So, in that case uh, the program will be interrupted and your mouse displayed will be displayed and again the code will execute. So, an interrupt so an interrupt is there. So, basically it suspends the normal code flow and immediately it has to sub sub service the interrupt. For example, the code is executing I am moving the mouse. So, the mouse is being changed. So, what happens? So, the basic say for example, I am listening to a music and at the same time I am moving the mouse. So, for a very little fraction of time will not in, in a very high speed processing 
in a modern PC, we won't get the time difference. But what happens is that after execution of the current instruction, always the system or the CPU checks whether there is an interrupt. For example, now I have moved the mouse. So, after execution of one instruction, it will check okay, the mouse has been moved, so it has to be displayed. So, that is actually called the interrupt service routine that is displaying the movement of the mouse in the appropriate place. Then before servicing the interrupt, what are the current state of this code? Like for example, our code was adding 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 in 3 instructions. So, 2 plus 4 has already been added. Then the mouse movement was there, there was an interrupt. Then again you service the interrupt that is the mouse movement has been shown. Then again when you come back to the normal code, then again you have to recollect what I have already done. That is already I had added 2 plus 3. So, that I have to remember, recollect back and then do the final calculation and keep on addressing. So, before addressing the interrupt or servicing the interrupt, you have to store the present status of the code like a program counter, the status registers, etcetera, which is in a stack. So, this is actually called saving the current program status world. Then you run the interrupt service routine, service the interrupt and again come back and recollect what has been already done that is you pop up the values from the stack for the corresponding registers and again then go ahead and start executing the normal instruction. In a nutshell, after ex every instruction is executed, you check whether interrupt has come. If an interrupt has come, save all the stuff like program counter, instruction register values and some register values or that is the intermediate stuff of your code in a stack. Then service the interrupt, again come back from where we have left and at that point of time, you again recollect everything back and go ahead. So, therefore, interrupt means not only servicing the interrupt, you have to store back everything. So, after coming back, you can start from where we have left. So, that is actually a basic idea of instruction execution. That is you fetch, decode and execute and in fact, if the instruction interrupt, then you have to service the interrupt service and then again come back. So, what are the objectives of this unit? This is a comprehension, explain, explain the fetch and execute cycle of an instruction that you will be able to explain what is the fetch and execute cycle of an instruction or a how an instruction is fetched, decoded and executed. Then there is a direct mode as well as a indirect mode. So, you will be also able to express a indirect mode of instruction execution. Direct mode means some operands will be, the values of the operands will be either in the instruction or you can directly find the value of the instruction opposite the operands in the memory. But indirect means you will be redirected to a memory location and in that memory location you will not have the data, but in that memory location you will have a another pointer which will go to the data. That is the indirect job. Sometimes if I say that load something from memory location 3030. So, the data is expected in the memory location 3030, but in an indirect mode 3030 will have another memory location and that memory location will have the data. So, that is actually indirect way of doing it. So, this, what is the benefit etcetera we will see in coming units. And finally, describe the type of I O devices and an interrupt cycle. So, generally interrupts basically happen due to I O. As I said like I am moving a mouse. So, the interrupt has to be serviced. Say for example, I do not do that, then what happens? You are running a long code and I am the moving the mouse, I am not allowing an interrupt. So, what is going to happen? The whole code will run and then only we will be able to see the mouse movement. Then what is going to happen? Then the main problem will be like for example, I am showing the PPT, a code is being executed and I do not allow the mouse interrupt. Then you will how will happen? Only after the whole PPT has been shown, then only the mouse movement will be displayed. So, this is not going to serve our purpose. So, therefore, at every time the PPT is running means some code are executing and is being displayed in the screen. So, now when I move a mouse, it is servicing the instruction by interrupt service routine and after servicing it is coming back. So, you will be also able to describe what is an interrupt service routine and how it ha is handled for I O devices. So, now we will see the details of the instruction cycle. So, instruction cycle basically has fetch, decode and operation fetch, operate oh sorry operand fetch, execute and interrupt if interrupt if it is there. So, basically as I told you decodes and operand fetch sometimes we call as a decode itself and then execute. So, fetch decode execute, fetch decode execute these are the three terms we always use. Decode means operator fetch is also coming in the decode. So, first is fetch that is a memory we have already seen memory there are cells and you can access only one cell at a time. So, first whatever the instruction is available over there is fetched. So, how it will be fetched? There is a special register which is actually called the PC that is called the program counter. So, the program counter will initially have the value of the memory location where the instruction starts. For the time being let us assume that the instruction first instruction is loc located at 0000 hex memory location. So, PC value will be 0000 hex. So, PC means program counter is having the value of 0000 hex. So, immediately that instruction will be fetched and that will be decoded and executed. So, whatever value of the program counter that particular instruction is fetched. So, how it is fetched? 
So as, I, as you already know, in a von Neumann architecture, both the instruction as well as the data are in the instruction, in the, is in the memory. We do not differentiate that way. So, fetching an instruction or fetching an operand or the data is the same way. So, first we say that memory address register will have the value of PC because you have to get the value of the instruction to a from the memory. So, there is only one way the you have to give the address of that instruction. Where is the address of that instruction? The address of the instruction is in the PC. So, memory address register will now have the value of the PC. Next, once it is get given and the uh, register is in read or the memory is in read mode. So, memory that value in that memory location which is mentioned in the PC will be located to memory buffer register. That is say in the 0, 0, 0 memory location which was in the PC is now being fetched that is read and the memory will dump the value of the instruction that is present in memory location 0000, 0, 0, 0 to memory buffer register. So, memory buffer register now will have the instruction which was in the memory location 0000, 0, 0, 0 that was pointed by the program counter. After doing this, program counter is incremented by 1 because now it has to in the next instruction cycle it has to take the next instruction. And then the memory buffer register that is the memory where you have got the instruction right now will be given to a special register which is called the instruction register that is the IR. So, basically what happens the instruction is taken from the 0th memory location via memory buffer register and it is put into a special purpose register called the instruction register which will now handle the instruction. So, it now knows a uh, first instruction has come which was pointed by the program counter. Now, I have to decode and execute the instruction. Especially it has to be noted that now the program counter has been incremented by 1 because now I want to execute the next instruction in the next cycle. Then the next stage now the instruction is already present in the instruction register. So, now what you have to do? You have to decode and fetch operand. Sometimes some people actually say decode and operand fetch as two different parts because you decode the instruction and then based on the requirement you have to fetch it. But sometimes again we club them together, it depends. So, of course, our instruction at least has two parts. One is the operation to be performed that is depend by the off code because you have to tell what I have to do that is the job of an instruction. So, instruction must always have a specific part which is actually called the off code or the what operation it has to do. So, maybe if the, I assume that there are only three instructions in my computer. So, maybe 0 0 for add, 0 0 1 for fetch and 0 2 for write. So, I will add bring some numbers then the off code will be 0 1 then I add it. So, the off code will be 0 0 and if I want to write back the off code will be 1 1. So, 0 0 0 1 1 1. So, these are the three uh, two bits required and the three combinations if the instructions of your computer has only three instructions. So, there is some part of the instruction which is whose code actually tells the computer what to do. Then depending on that you have to fetch the operate, operate, operands that is very important because the instruction means you have to do something and do something on some operate operands. So, the operand values will also should also be specified in the instruction. So, depending on the instruction site type there can be two operands, three operands, four operands and in fact theoretically speaking n number of operands given in instruction. But if you have such long instructions I think you can always feel what is going to happen. Then your memory width will be in huge. So, you do not want to do that. It, it may, you may have a memory whose width may be 1028 or 1024 bits. We do not like to do that. Therefore, we always restrict our instruction length to a certain limit. Generally, we may have two operate, operands in that case. So, in that case suffice 32 bits instruction will suffice. So, now there is something called addressing mode. So, there are different types of addressing mode. Now, what is an addressing mode? The addressing mode means it will tell you that where are the value of the operand specified. The most simplest one is immediate. We can always say that there is one instruction called increment i n c r increment and the value may be 3. This is one of the most simplest instruction. It tells that increment and where is what you have to increment whatever value of the integer which is given in the instruction itself. So, this is actually called the immediate instruction. In that case operand fetch is not required at all that is the in operand or the operate operand is available in the instruction itself. But sometimes it is not very easy because you the idea is something like that this is a memory cell. Now, one word instruction. So, some part will be taken by the off code that is you have to encode what the instruction will do. The remaining part is will limit will be giving you to write the operands. So, for example, so this may be it may be 8 bits assume. Then what happens? Maybe I put 3 bits to have the number of operations. So, there are 8 operations. So, 3 bits are gone for that. Now, we have only 5 bits remaining. So, if you have 5 bits remaining, so whatever data you can put can be maximum up to 2 to the power 5. 
So, 0 to 2 to the power 5 that is 32 numbers can only be represented, but if I want to add 100 plus 100 then you cannot write an instruction like this. So, this is not going to have my purpose. So, better what I can do I need a longer space to put the operands, but longer space to put the operand means I have to make the instruction length longer wider memory not very good. So, what I will try to do I will have a direct addressing mode or an indirect addressing mode. So, direct addressing mode means here I will put the value of the memory. Maybe I will write 36, 6 bits. Now, this is going to point to a memory location and that memory location will have the exact value. So, we can assume that the whole memory may be say 32 bits correct and let us assume that this is 32 bit and we have let me redraw it properly. So, the main problem is that immediate addressing is very easy to handle, but then you will be limited by the range of data. So, this is the memory with this 32 and let me have a instruction where I assume 10 bits because maybe 1000 instructions. So, 10 bits are reserved for the instruction type and then 22 is for the operands. So, maybe what I can do is that. So, uh, these 22 bits are reserved for the operands. So, what I can do is that I can put some value directly here, then my range will be 2 to the power 22, but in fact generally we may not have a single kind of a thing single operand instruction will not have we may have 2. So, 1 operand here and 1 operand here. So, maybe now 11 and 11 22 plus 32. So, the range is 2 to the power 11, 2 to the power 11 and 10. So, 10 bits are reserved for operation type it first operand is 11 bits, second operand 11 bits. So, you cannot have 2 lakhs and 2 lakh number range kind of an operation because you are limited by 2 to the power 11 that is nothing by 2024. So, range is 2024, range is 2024. So, 2 operands ranges are 0 to 2024. If you want to have negative numbers then again it will be hard. So, what is the better way of doing it? I actually put some memory location. So, now the range is 2 to the power 11, 2 to the power 11. You can access memory whose size is 2 to the power 11 or 2 to the power 11. Now, so let me have a memory like this whose size is 2 to the power 11. So, it will tell whatever memory location you will have, you will now point to a memory. So, the memory width is 32. So, your data is present over there. So, now what is the width of the data? Width of the data is 32 bits. So, it is a huge number 2 to the 30 power 32 is a huge number you can do very high precision calculations. So, therefore, we always go for direct or, or that is non immediate mode of instruction. That is in the instruction you will give an address of a memory where the data will be stored. So, you can have a wider range of numbers to be represented. So, that is actually called a direct instruction. So, in that case you have to fetch the operand. So, where the operand will be specified the address of the operand will be specified in the instruction itself. So, what you will have to do to do that some sub steps will be required. So, again you have to take the value of the operand which is that is the address of the operand from the instruction put it in the memory address register and again the memory that is now the data part of the memory. So, again the memory buffer register will have the value like for example, so I may have say add is an instruction and then I say say 32 hex then 32 hex then I add this sorry 32 is not possible 33 hex and 33 hex. That means, there is a memory and I am referring to 32 hex location over here and I am this is locating 33 hex, but now this is 32 bits. So, I can add two 32 bits number together. So, this one this will now go to the address bus, the address bus will point over here and this one will be this data will be fetched. Ne next this data will be fetched and you can add these two numbers. So, this is actually called decode and fetch. There is another instruction the benefits etcetera will, will show in the later units, but that is something called a indirect mode. So, what is an indirect mode? So, in an indirect mode what happens? You can find out that instruction indirect mode what? Indirect mode basically what happens? That is in the last instruction what we have seen in the last instruction we said that the data will be present the address of the data will be present in the instruction. So, now you can go to a memory location and in the memory location the data will be present. Indirect means basically there is one more step which is going over there. So, in the indirect mode what happens it is just one more redirection from the direct mode that is this is an instruction this is your off code this is referring to a memory location. In that memory location in the direct mode we had the data itself, but now it will again have some address to another memory location where the data will be there. Now, what are the advantages disadvantages we will cover later in later units and modules, but idea is that double 
that is you point from here to here, here also your data will not be there, but the data will be in another memory location whose uh, address is given over here. So, again it actually represents a more wider range of memory or wider of you can access more wider range of memory over here. For example, as you are taking there 11 bits and these are 11 bits. So, what is the range of memory you can access only 2 to the power 11, but say your memory is in level of gigabytes. 2 to the power 11 is only in the level of kilobytes. So, I cannot have a very wide address over here. So, but if I have the address of the address here, then again it is a 32 bit. So, you can access a 32 2 to the power 32 size memory by this method. So, if you have taking a direct approach which was in the previous case, so the address of the operand was present directly over here. You go to that memory location you find it, but only the size of the memory that can be accessed is 11 2 to the power 11, but if I have a larger size memory then you are going to have an indirect one. That is from here you point here, here also the data will not be there, here we will have the address of the data. So, but here is again 32 bit, so now it is 2 to the power 32. So, uh, again a full fledged memory can be accessed over here. So, that is the again the advantage of a indirect mode, but more details we will see in the later units. So, that is what is the idea. So, here the steps will be slightly indirect. So, what will happen? First the memory address register will have the instruction register. Instruction register has the address of a memory location that has the address of the operand, a jump. Memory address register initially will have that first whatever is to the power 11 whatever register address you give it will be there, it will point to the memory, memory will give the data, but again that memory has again some address that will be again fit to the memory buffer register and again then the data will be coming out over here. So, that is just multiple steps. So, memory address register is first will or the instruction register first will give the value to the memory address register, memory buffer register will have the memory cell whose address is in the MAR. So, now it is actually again this value will be again fed to memory address register and finally, this value will be given that is actually indirect address. Now, we have a wider uh, indirect means a wider range of memory can be accessed. Okay. So, now instruction has been fetched, it has been decoded what to do and the operands have also been fetched. Now, you have to execute it. So, this is actually the job of the CPU or the processing unit will have to do the job. So, that is simple. So, based on the off code you have to either do any three of these things that is data transfer, either you read from the memory, write from the memory, arithmetic and logic operation that is add, subtract, multiply or logical or not or sometimes you have to branch that is based on the answer of instruction either you will be the next instruction or we will jump 10 or 20 steps ahead. So, basically there are three type of instructions data transfer, arithmetic and logical and finally, the control that is if then else kind of a statement. Arithmetic means plus minus, data transfer means in scan f, read f. So, scan f, read f are in the C in the machine I mean, or the, in the architecture version it will be load and store. Now, we are coming to the indirect phase of instruction execution that is a interrupt. As we again discussed that interrupt is basically a normal flow of code is going on, then some hardware or some I O devices interrupt which has to be serviced in an urgent manner, then basically the instruction starts. So, what happens? So, after no interrupt can occur when an instruction is being instituted. Instruction 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 is going on. In between, no interrupt can come, but after an instruction has been executed, it will check whether there is an instruction or not. If there is an interrupt has come, then what you do? You save the value of PC in a stack. Why? Because say may PC may be 10 now when the interrupt has occurred. That means what? After you execution instruction 9, PC has become 10 and then interrupt has occurred or you have detected the interrupt. Then while coming back, you have to again restart your code from 10th location or what or that is the PC value 10 that is 10th location. So, what you will do? You will save the value of program counter, all the registers, intermediate values in a stack and then you will go to the instruction service routine. Who will instruction service routine is nothing but another code itself or a code module which has some instruction is a jump. So, how can you jump? Now, the instruction service routine address will be loaded into the PC. But the code actually was to execute at 10, but now an instruction has interrupt has started. So, you have to service the interrupt that is a new set of code, you can think it to be a function, it will jump and again come back. So, I save the value of PC equal to 10 and several other intermediate registers and then I put the address of the interrupt service within the PC. Now, the PC will start pointing out to the instruction which is in the interrupt service routine, maybe this is your memory where your PC 10 it has to be executed, but some interrupt occurred, then your PC is jumping to here that is the ISR, it will start operating from here and after it is finishing back, it should again come back to 10. So, how it is done? 
again the value after you complete the ISR you put pop back the value of PC from the stack. So, now again PC will have the value of 10 and again you restart everything. So, that is what is the idea of a interrupt service routine. Again I will just show you the flow no? the zoom manner. So, you can see so, uh, address calculation whatever is done instruction you fetch address calculation from PC. So, the instruction is fetched from what is the value of the from the memory from the PC instruction is fetched then instruction is decoded calculate the address of the operands we have already seen it may be indirect direct immediate fetch operand if there are multiple you have to do multiple times operation fetch but I told you that very less large number of operands in a single instruction is not a very good idea keep on doing it then after all the operands have been fetched you do the data operation that is in fact it may this is your logic and or arithmetic operation that is the operand that is your execution of the instruction. Then finally, again you have to find out where the answer has to be stored for that also some operand address calculation is required. Like for example, if you said that uh, add a plus b and store it to some place or as instruction may be simple like store something to something. So, in that case the data operation will be nothing you store the instruction. So, you have to also go for a operand address calculation where you want to store the result you store the result and you go on back. But sometimes the operand address calculation may be very trivial like uh, add accumulator with memory location 32. That means, whatever the data is in memory location 32 has to be added with the accumulator and stored back in the accumulator itself. Accumulator is a register. So, operation calculation in this case is trivial that is the accumulator itself, but you still you have to do it st store the result you have to keep on doing it. Now, this completes actually one set of instruction execution after storing then you check whether interrupt has been done as arrived or not. We do not check any interrupt in between because if you do it you may go into a deadlock mode that one instruction is not completed you start another instruction and so much lot of crumbers some stuff may happen. So, we stop after the instruction has been completed then we check whether the interrupt is there or not. If no again you if PC has already been incremented you keep on in fetching the instruction decoding it executing and go on, but if it is not then you have to service the interrupt. Servicing the interrupt means you have to basically uh, here here actually before you service the interrupt here you have to save all the results of the PC intermediate values and etcetera and after you service the interrupt you have to again reload the value of the PC that is you save everything. So, so at this point you save PC all program status what after servicing the interrupt again you pop and do your job. So, it is very simple fetch decode execute it. check if there is an interrupt if there is interrupt save everything service the interrupt again come back and keep on doing it. that is what is the idea of a whole life of an instruction. So, this is actually the figure so user program you check there is an interrupt you go to the interrupt handler that is interrupt service routine. So, a PC value should be i plus 1 or something, but now it will be changing to maybe some 25 or r bit value service the interrupt again get back the value of i plus 1 and again start execution that is what is the pictorial representation. Okay, now, this is something very interesting the best basically there is something called ICC that is not the instruction cycle code that is how basically the cycle code that is at what stage of the instruction you are in is it fetch decode is interrupt or execution how it is determined that what stage the instruction is. So, therefore, there is a special code called instruction cycle code it is a 2 bit code and it is used to determine the case. Now, we will see how basically it is very interesting and how basically these codes are changed based on phase to phase, phase to phase. So, 0 0 is the fetch, 0 1 is the decode and operand fetch, 0 1 is the execute phase and 1 1 may be the interrupt if it comes as I told you generally we talk fetch decode execute, decode means operand is also fetched using that cycle. So, let us start over here. So, if you see, so what happens? So, let me just zoom it over here. So, if you zoom it over here you can see what happens basically. So, first 0 0. So, ICC value is 0 0 initial. So, in instruction fetch it comes over here. So, if it is a 0 0 means it is an instruction fetch. So, it will come to this part. So, instruction is fetched. Now, you have to study with an immediate addressing or it is a non immediate addressing. So, if it is an immediate addressing means what the value of the operand itself is available in the instruction itself. So, add accumulator 32 immediate. I have to say whether 32 is a memory or it is an immediate. So, I say immediate that means value of what is value is present in the accumulator has to be added with 32 and give the result back in the accumulator. But sometimes we say that 32 hex is a memory location in that case you have to go to the memory location get the value and then add it. 
So immediate addressing means yes. Then I set the code of ICC as one zero. Let us go by this flow, and then we'll see immediate addressing. Then what we have to do? Then it's one zero, and if you come back to one zero, you have to note that one zero is means is nothing but execute. That means if you fetch the instruction, if it is immediate addressing, immediately you make IC equal to one zero. That means immediately you can execute it. But if it is immediate addressing, then you have to get the value of the operand from the memory. So you make the ICC value equal to zero one. So what is the value of ICC zero one? What will happen? It will come over here. ICC value is now basically from here is zero one. So I wish this zero one is this much. That means you have to decode and fetch the operand because the inst instruction is a immediate is a instruction which is non-immediate. That is the value is available in the memory location. Then you come over here. Then you check is it direct or indirect. Direct is very simple. The value of where the op operand is available that in address is available in the instruction itself. So if it is yes, fetch the operands from the given instruction address because say that I have said add accumulator thirty two memory location. So the value what I have to add is available in the memory location thirty two. So directly you fetch the operands in the instruction and then make make ICC as one zero. ICC as one zero means directly you can go for instruction execution. If it is no. Then indirect. So what was indirect? Add thirty-two. If I say that it's an indirect instruction, then I said add some accumulator thirty-two. That means the thirty-two memory location. That in thirty-two memory location also I don't have the value of the operand. Thirty-two memory location has some value. That value is again an address where the value of the operand is exactly present. So it says fetch the operands from the given address in the instruction. That means whatever is an indirect one. So if it's indirect one means say for example thirty two, so memory location thirty two now is the indirect instruction. So you fetch the value from thirty two. So what is thirty two? That is again an address where the where the operand is specified. So you give the value of the value of memory location thirty two to this, and then you fetch it. So I can you can easily understand. So if I say immediate thirty two, sorry direct thirty two, that means you fetch the operand from the given address in the instruction. Directly you can get the value of the operand from the memory. But here is the indirect. So you go to 32, fetch the memory location value, and then you give it to this block. So first you get go to 32 memory location, get the address of the operand, and then again fetch it. Then once in an indirect manner or a direct manner you get the operand, make IC equal to 10. IC equal to 10 means you directly you can execute. Okay. So now all these fetching of instructions are done. If it is immediate, IC you can directly make 10 direct execution. No zero one. No means you have to find out the values. So if it is direct, you can directly fetch the value from the address which is available in the instruction. Make it IC one zero means execute. If it is no, go in an indirect step, and then make IC equal to one zero. So now IC has been executed. So once the ICC is one zero, you execute it. After it has been executed, you have to check for interrupt. If interrupt is no, make ICC ICC equal to zero zero means next instruction will be fetched. If it is yes, then make IC equal to one one. IC equal to one one means again, it will. Servicing the interrupt, and after servicing the interrupt, you make an ICC equal to zero zero. So basically, this is the cycle. So in in a nutshell, you start with ICC zero zero code is instruction fetch, fetch it. If it is available in the in, in, instruction, the data is available or the operand available immediately. Make ICC equal to ten. That means directly execute. If it is not an immediate, make zero one zero one means there will be. So in that case, we will be executing this block. And uh, in this block, we will be executing it. In that case, means uh, immediate means what? Directly, value is available. Need not do anything. Directly execute it. Not available means you have to go to this middle block. So in the middle block, what happens? In the middle block, if you look at it, it is being transferred from zero one. So it is being transferred to this block. So in this block, it is a direct or indirect way of fetching the instruction. And then after fetching the instruction, you go to the execute phase. That is one zero. And After one zero, uh, you have fetched all the instruction, and then uh, sorry, one zero means it is the instruction execution. So after you get the value of one zero, you uh, is execute, and if it is zero one, that means it is not for execute. You have to get the data. So to get the data, you are going to go for the middle cycle, and once it is done, you get make the value of IC one zero. So you execute it. After execution, you check. The interrupt. If the interrupt, you make it one one. That is the interrupt phase, and service the interrupt, and again make it zero zero, so that you go to the phase phase cycle. So this diagram basically shows the cycles in terms of instruction cycle code. You start with zero zero. If everything is available in the code itself, you directly make the code one zero, execute it. If not, make it zero one, 
get the data from the memory or indirectly from the memory and then again go back to 0 0 if there is no interrupt if there is an interrupt make the code as 1 1 and then again after servicing the interrupt make it 0 0. So, that is what is the idea. So, again what I have told you is written over in this slide. So, first is 0 0 then ICC is made equal to 0 1 uh, based on what is the type of instruction if, if it is immediate then you did not do anything and otherwise you have to make it 0 1 and after all the operands are fetched you make it 1 0 that is now it is ready to execute 1 0 means ready to execute 0 1 means you have to fetch the data. So, after data has been fed you make it 1 0 and then execute it if there is an interrupt you make the code 1 1 otherwise if the no interrupt you directly make it 0 0 and keep on doing it. So, basically the cycle is 0 0 1 0 0 1 1 0 and back sometimes after this this may come in but, but otherwise is 0 0 0 1 1 0 0 0 interrupt means it will come in basically. So, anyway so these discussions already I have done. So, instruction fetch. So, what happens in that cycle then instruction decode and instruction execute. I will now it is better basically without going into the theory you can read over this theory. So, it is again a nutshell it is represented program counter then how it is brought etcetera and then basically how it is executed. So, now it is better that we take an example rather than taking so much about theory we will take an example that in a memory location there are two memory location f f 0 and f f 1 and f f 2 is the place where I have to store the results. So, some data is present in f f 0 some data is present in f n 1 I have to add these two numbers and store the value in f f 2. So, this is what I want to do and I want to show you with an example. Now, these are the data f f 0 and f f 1 are the two locations where data is present and you have to write the value in f f 2. So, this corresponds to the data memory of one human architecture, but then also somewhere the instruction should be present that instruction which will do the adding for you. So, let us assume that there is uh, this is the code I'll write uh, this is the code I will tell you and that somewhere the code also has to be placed in the memory. So, we are assuming that the memory location for the starting of the code is 3 f 0. So, what is the first instruction it will say that load f f 0 that is. So, first data is f f 0. So, you load the value of f f 0 in the accumulator then you add the add f f 1. So, what does it mean? It means that whatever is the memory value available in f f 1 that you add with accumulator. Now, accumulator has the value present in f f 0. So, now we will have f f 0 plus f f 1 and the value will be stored in the accumulator. Finally, s t a f f 2 means store the value of accumulator in the memory location f f 2. So, these are the three instruction l d a f f 0 l d add f f 1 and s t a f f 2. So, in these three instructions also will be stored in the memory because it is a von Neumann architecture and the number it starts from f f 0. So, this is basically your simple code and the memory architecture I will now go step by step. So, this is your architecture. So, you see the 3 f 0, 3 f 1 and 3 f 2 these are the data memory. First instruction is 0 f f 0, 0 is the code as I told you for fetching an instruction from the memory location this is the memory location f f 0 in the accumulator. So, 0 is the off code here f f 0 is the memory location that is a direct memory direct instruction that is not an immediate one because f f 0 is not a data f f 0 basically points to that memory this one actually is pointing if you look at it it is basically pointing to this memory location that is f f 0. So, it is a direct addressing. So, if you, if you just find out what is the value of this location that is 5 we will be doing our job 8 is the off code for add add accumulator that means, whatever value is in the accumulator you add whatever is in the value of f f 1 memory location and store it back to the accumulator. 1 is again the off code for write back that is store. So, whatever value is stored in the accumulator you store to this f f 2. So, f f 2 it will be stored. So, now this is the basic memory configuration important registers are program counter instruction register memory address register memory buffer register accumulator and some normal register is available to us. So, program counter is always pointing to the first instruction that is f f 3 f 0. So, program counter is pointing to this. Now, next next what happens? So, the program counter is now pointing to 3 f 0 that is this memory location and this code will be 0 f f 0 will go to the memory buffer register because you want to read it that means, whatever value in the PC that value will go to the address register address bus of the memory and this location whatever is value over there will be first going to the memory buffer register and that as this is an instruction it will go to the instruction register simple program counter value will go to memory address register memory address register is 3 f 0. So, this is the value of the 3 register it will be fetched over here memory buffer register still now I do not know whether it is an instruction or a data, but from the memory register I will go to instruction register because we always start with an instruction 
because nobody can start with the data and instruction then an instruction so first instruction so it's an instruction so instruction decoder has now the value of this simple again repeating program counter has the value of 3f0 that is the memory location where the first instruction is there it is loaded to memory address register this value memory gives the value to the memory buffer register first instruction or the first memory access of a code that is always an instruction so it is going to the instruction register that is ff0 now the instruction will register with decode it will find that zero so what is that first zero means it is the off code so it means that you have to fetch the operand from the memory location ffff0 so if i assume that this is a 16 bit word 4444 the 16 bit word so only first four bits are reserved for off code and the other three bits are reserved for the memory location address so in this case i can address a memory whose size is 2 to the power 4 plus 4 plus 4 that is 2 to the power 12 if you want to go for a higher this one then you have to go for a indirect addressing then it will be continuing over here and then the address will be of this one will be but anyway that is not a concern for us right now so next stage what happens now all the story has been done program counter is immediately incremented by 1 it will now start pointing to 3f1 then what uh instruction register already knew that i have to get the value from memory location number ff0 so ff0 will be the value of ff0 will be fed to the memory buffer register now there is a difference between instruction fetch and the data fetch so this this was the first instruction which was fetched that is 0 ff0 so it is going to instruction register now the instruction register knows that instruction has already been there now i have to get the data so where is the data is there ff0 so the value of ff0 is in the memory address register the memory will give the value of whatever is available in ff0 that is 0005 to the memory buffer register now it will not go to instruction register because these are data which is and already what we have to do has been decoded by 2 it will go to accumulator zero means load the value from the memory location to accumulator so accumulator has the value of 5 now next see what happens now the program counter has gone to this one so 8 ff1 so this is the new instruction so 3f1 means so 3f1 is the memory address this is the value 8ff1 so this from this memory location it will go to the memory buffer register and already in the last last instruction we have fetched the data so this is a instruction so first was instruction next cycle we got a data so now again it's a new data but it's an instruction so that is 8ff1 so instead of going to the accumulator or anywhere else it will put the value of 8ff1 into the instruction register now 8 stands for adding adding of where whatever is in the accumulator that is 5 with whatever is the data available in ff1 so it will add 5 with the data available in ff1 and store it in accumulator bag so let us go to the next state so again let me zoom it over and this is your step so now you see what i told you so again now instruction pc is now pointing to the next instruction but currently we are executing this so it is having the value of instruction register 8 ff1 so what it tells that i have to add add what whatever value is available in the accumulator that is the previous value with whatever is the value available in memory location ff1 and i have to store it in some register or some accumulator in this case right so now the memory buffer register will have the value of memory address register will have the value of ff1 so ff1 will be memory address register that means this address and whatever value is available in ff1 that is 7 will go to memory buffer register that one will be added with the accumulator and stored back to the accumulator that is what is being done by this off code 8 so now the value of this one is 7 plus 5 plus 7 is hex c i'll get it right into the accumulator now the last instruction the pc is pointing to this one so now just previous to that i accessed a memory for data so again i'll access the memory for instruction so again the value of pc that is 3f2 will be the memory address so this is 3f2 this data will be put to memory buffer register so in fact is an instruction so the last instruction was a data access so now this is an instruction access so now the instruction will be going over here so 1 ff2 so it will be decoded what one stands for whatever is in the accumulator please write back to the memory location that is specified over here so memory location accumulator sorry accumulator has now the value of 000c that is the result of the output where it has to be stored one is saying that whatever is put in the accumulator you have to write back where i have to write back i have to write back in ff2 so again the last instruction how it is executed so pc has now gone to this next instruction 
anyway it's not there for us but it has been incremented so now the instruction was one ff2 one tells that whatever is in the accumulator write back at ff2 so what is ff2 ff2 is this location so this ff2 will be copied to memory address register but now the memory will be in a write mode in all other steps it was in a read mode so it will be in a write mode and what is the address the address is ff2 it is address register and what I have to write, I have to write what is the value of the accumulator. So, I will write the value of the accumulator in memory buffer register. In all other cases, it was happening the other way around. What was happening, what was available in the memory buffer register, I was writing it to the IR if it was an instruction or I was writing to the accumulator if it was a or uh, sorry or if I was writing to the accumulator if it was a instruction or in the other way around. Means, if it was an instruction, I was writing to the IR and if it was some kind of a data, I was putting it to the accumulator. But now, I have to write back to the memory. So, what I am doing? I am taking the value of the accumulator and writing to the memory buffer register and the memory buffer register will write the value in FF2 that is C. This completes the execution of these three steps. You read, add and again store back and this is actually done. So, after that the PC is uh, uh, calculating the value of 3 F3, but that is again the next instruction which is not at all concerned for us. So, this in this unit we have shown basically what is an instruction, basic idea, what are the components it have, how they are executed, how they are fetched, what is the life cycle of instruction. And with a very nice example we have seen that how an instruction is accessed, how it is fetched from the memory, then how it is executed, how operands are fetched from the memory, how they are operated and again written back to the memory or this completion of the instruction. So, again towards the end we again also see some of the questions and how it meets the objectives. So, consider an instruction fetch cycle of this one, Ex instruction fetch execute decode explain the purpose of each of the four phases. So, we easily go for the, uh, the objective which says that explain instruction fetch execute decode cycle. Explain the use of indirect cycle that is another objective. Briefly explain using an example how to provide CPU services using an I O interrupt that is as I we have already at length discussed how an interrupt is done, what interrupt sub is in. So, we will be after doing the unit obviously and answering this question you will be able to meet the third instruction, third objective. Describe the use of I O devices and incorporation in the instruction cycle. So, these two objectives actually match question number 2. Give a scheme to identify the four phases in an instruction that is be using the ICC. So, it can match the instruction that is the objective of explain the fetch and execute cycle of an instruction and explain using a simple example how a ASME language code is executed. Again the first and the second and third instructions are basically objective are clarified over here. That means, if you can if your assembly language have some interrupts then of course, these two um, these, uh, objectives are made otherwise the first objective is made. So, in fact, we have now studied how a basic uh, instructions what is the basic instruction how it looks and how it our how this unit actually encompasses these three objectives. The next way next unit we are going to see how we can design instructions of a basic on a specific canonical format. This, this at that time we have kept this in a very generic manner that this is the opcode, this is the instruction, this is the part of data, this is the part of operands. How can we make it more formal and suitable for a computer architecture that is what we are going to study in the next unit. Thank you.